Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the DJI RS3 mini gimbal from a beginner oriented perspective. So as you can see here, this gimbal is really compact and it's very, very powerful. And like I said, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know on how to use this tool for your video and photo needs. It's got tons of features built in, and uh, if you've never set one of these up before, it's a little bit complicated when it comes to balancing, and so I wanna show you how to balance it horizontally and vertically, depending on which way you're planning on shooting, and that's like a setup process. So I'm gonna go through that, and then we'll uh, turn the gimbal on, and I'll show you how to go through that little setup process. You have to register it, it's not that hard, don't worry. Strap in because it's gonna be a pretty lengthy video, and below the video, guys, I'll have timestamps set up so you can skip ahead if you're looking for a certain feature. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is plug this in to a USB-C charging port. Now, it doesn't really give you anything to charge the gimbal. There's no plug that plugs in the wall that came with my unit, but it's not that big of a deal. Most of us have chargers nowadays. So it does come with two cables in there, but no charger. I already have this thing fully charged up, so it is ready to go. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna screw this little mini tripod onto the bottom of the gimbal so I can stand it upright, like so. So I'm just gonna spread the legs out on this tripod here. Now I'm gonna use my Sony a7 IV with the full frame 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. And then of course we have the tripod plate that for the camera that slides into this on the gimbal. And I also got this extra handle here, guys. So this is an accessory you can buy. Um, it does cost an extra like, I don't know, 50 or $60. I'll show you more about this later. All right, so this is the quick release plate that needs to go on the bottom of the camera. And notice how it has this little lip here. You see that lip on the front? That's gonna to go to the front of the camera. You can see that lip there is gonna go this way. And I'm just gonna get it started and then I'll get it in the right position. And now you can see here on the side of the camera, you see that little lip? All right, so the next thing we're gonna to need to do is unlock some of these arms. Now, you're gonna see on the arms, each motor has a lock associated with it. So there's a lock right here. There's a lock right here. And then there's another lock right here on the top of this guy here. So those are the three locks that you're gonna to need to work with when it comes to using this gimbal. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is unlock this lock here, which is on the side, like so. And that will release it so you can do this. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna swivel it this way, and then we're gonna lock that again so it stays in place, like so. Now on the top of the gimbal here, we have this other lock right there. So I'm gonna unlock that. Let me just tilt this back so you can see. It's this lock right here. I'm gonna unlock that and that frees this up. So now this thing is like free swinging as you can see, but this arm is locked and the bottom is still locked. If I unlock the bottom one, it'll allow it to swivel like this. But we don't wanna do that yet. We just wanna leave it uh, pretty much all locked except for this one at the moment. All right, so now what we're gonna to need to do is slide the camera into this quick release. You wanna make sure that you have this unlocked here on the side. This lever here has a lock and an unlock. You wanna make sure it's in the unlock position when you go to slide the camera in, which is back here like this. So that's the unlocked position. This red handle here, I'll show you that while it's visible, that allows you to slide this thing back and forth, as you can see. So that's to adjust the camera width, basically. So it's, it's a little harder to see that once the camera's mounted. So I'm just gonna put it like right there for now. We might have to adjust that though, we'll see in a minute. All right, so check this out. I'm just gonna slide this into the top, like so. And then it clicks into place. So I'm just gonna put it right around the center area and then we have the lever. Now, if you wanna take this off, there's this pin on the outside. If you push this in, that will release it. Look, if I try to take the camera off, it won't come off. You have to actually hit this pin. That releases it to take it off. And that's the clicking that you're hearing right there when you slide it on, like so. So just put that somewhere about in the center and then we're gonna tighten it. But you can see, you gotta be careful. You always wanna hold the camera because right now it's grossly unbalanced and it's gonna swivel down. So listen, check it out. This is the next step. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna un unlock this right here. You could see the little lock and unlock. We're gonna swivel that to the unlock and then we're gonna drag this back. And now the concept here 
uh, that you need to be aware of is we're trying to get the center of mass. So the center of the camera body, basically, like with the lens, the center of that mass, we're trying to get aligned with this motor. That's what we're doing right now. So let's try to do that. So you can see here it's swiveling back now. So I can game it just a little bit forward. Let's go a little bit more. All right, right about there is pretty good. So I'm just gonna tighten this down by swiveling this lever here. And uh, let's see what we got now. So if I let that go, it's pretty close. You can also adjust it just very so slightly with this slider plate on the bottom. So if I just scoot it forward like another 16th of an inch uh, from the original plate here, that's now pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is swivel this upward and we're gonna want the camera to stay. And shockingly, it's actually staying right out of the gate. So you can see here, there's actually measurements on this bar. And I have mine right now almost at the bottom. You can see right here, uh, there's only a little bit sticking out. If you need to adjust this, you need to just swivel this. And now you can slide the camera up and down, as you can see here. So right about there is pretty good. Let me just lock that back like so. And now what you should have is you should be able to put the camera into any direction like this and it should stay on its own. As you can see, it's working quite well. When I get to here, it's actually swiveling back just a little bit. Let me just fine tune this just a little bit more here. All right, I think that's pretty good right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And remember this gap here that you're seeing right here this is the width, so we can adjust that now with the red lever. Remember that red lever I showed you before is right here. I can actually slide the camera over a little. All right, that's as far as it goes. So I have that maxed out all the way. So the camera's all the way to this direction. So that's looking pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock this motor like so, and then we're gonna unlock this motor on the back. And that lock is underneath here. So I'm just gonna unlock that motor and make sure that your hand is on the gimbal, okay? So I'm holding the gimbal here. So when I unlock this, you could see it wants to swivel like that. Now we got this handle here on the back. I'm gonna loosen this handle up and that'll give me the ability to slide the camera left and right. So I'm gonna slide the camera this way. I'm kind of lifting up on the camera to take the weight off so it's easier to slide this as well. It's actually easier to slide it like this if you have your thumb here and you just kind of push. All right, right about there is looking pretty good. So let me lock that down. All right, not bad. So that's that. Now let's lock this guy and we can unlock this guy here on the side and that'll allow us to do this swivel. So to balance this one, we need to tilt the camera and you can see how much it just swiveled. It's not supposed to swivel. So we need to adjust the camera either forward or back so it doesn't do that. And if you look at the payload of the camera, you can see that it clearly needs to come back. Like the, if you look at it, like from the top, like the camera is not centered with the mass when it comes to uh, this motor here. So what we gotta do is, like I said, slide it back. So let's move it back to somewhere around there on the red line here on the top. It actually has a red line. I have it at the two inch mark right now. So that's still not enough, it doesn't look like. So let me put it at the one and a half inch mark. See what that looks like. All right, so right about here is pretty good. I actually have it at the half inch mark. So that's pretty good. And you can see now when I tilt it, it's not swiveling. And that's what you want. So you can see it's swiveling just a little bit, but not much at all. All right, so that's a balanced gimbal. So let me show you how to mount this in the vertical orientation if you're a vertical shooter here. So I'm just gonna release the camera. And remember, you gotta press this button here on the side to slide it out like so. And there we have it. So in order to put this into the vertical orientation, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take this stuff off. So this lower arm and the quick release plate. So the quick release plate, to take that off, you gotta unloosen that red lever and notice how it doesn't come off. That's what this other pin is for. So you push that in and slides right off, like so. Now we need to take this bottom bracket off here so to loosen that, we take that off, and then there's a little button on the bottom, kind of like one of those lock buttons, and that slides it off. 
So you can see how this comes off. We can just set this to the side. We're not going to need that for this. So this is the release pin that allows that bar to slide off the bottom, guys. You can see it right there. Kind of looks like one of the lock pins, but a little bit different. So what we're going to need to do now is put this quick release plate on this side over here. So this is going to slide on like so. And then we can lock it in position like that. The red, red handle. And that's pretty good to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide the camera in, except it's going to be in the vertical format. Like so. Right about there. And I'm going to lock this. And there you have it. So now it's in the vertical orientation, as you can see here, which is pretty darn cool, right? So if you're doing Instagram or YouTube reels or whatever, shorts, things like that. So now the balancing process is the same as what we just did, but the payload has changed. So the orientation has changed. The center of mass is not the same because of where we're mounted to. So let me just show you how to balance this quickly in the vertical orientation, and it'll be a nice refresher for you if you've never done this before to watch the balancing process one more time quickly. So again, first thing we're going to do is start with this top one. And remember, you want to support the camera. Always support the camera. Make sure that it's balanced. And look at that. It's actually balanced right where it is. That's cool. Wasn't expecting that. All right, so now if we swivel it this way, there we go. That's pretty far off. All right, so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to slide the camera using this red lever here. We're going to need to slide the camera up or down. So it's swiveling this way, so we're going to need to slide the camera. It's not actually up. I mean, it's up if it's in the oriented position, but right now it's going to be back towards me. So right about there, and go a little bit too far. Sliding these things is always a little bit tricky. You got to find like right where to put your fingers. All right, right about there looks pretty balanced. So let me lock this red lever and see how this thing performs. It's going back, so I need to slide this just a touch forward. All right, right about there. So let's see. All right, now it's staying. That's what we're looking for, guys. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, so let's lock this one down. There we have it. Now, we will move on to the back motor, just like we did last time. Now remember, you want to support the camera. And we're going to unlock it, and you can see it's swiveling this way this time. So it's not as bad as it was last time, as far as being way off, but still pretty far off. So now, because the payload has shifted to the right overall, because the camera's in a vertical spot, we now need to take this arm and bring it this way. So let's bring that over until we get that center of mass calibrated. All right, that's getting close. Right about there. Nice. All right, cool. That's good. Now, lock that guy, and we will unlock this one on the bottom here. So we're unlocking this guy now. All the other two are locked, so they're not swiveling. And now we're going to do that test where we see if it swivels. Oh, sweet. We don't even need to adjust it. Cool. All right, so there we have it. So now we're in the vertical format, which is so cool, you know what I mean? I'm actually gonna put it back into the horizontal format, guys, because I don't actually wanna use it in the vertical format. I just wanted to show you that, though, if you need to use it in the vertical format. So I'm just gonna pause the video quick, put it back in the horizontal format, and then we're gonna go through the process of booting this gimbal up, and I will show you how this sucker works. First thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to unlock all the motors. So I got them all unlocked. You could see here, so you have the three different unlocks. So you got the lock here for this motor, you have a lock over here for this motor, and then you have the lock for this motor here. So they're all unlocked. Now we're just going to hold down the power button, which is on the side of the camera right here. I'm just going to hold that power button down. And the gimbal turns on. So now the gimbal is on. And when you first turn this on for the first time on the back screen, you're going to see a QR code that looks like this. I'll bring it up on the screen. And what you're going to want to do is scan that QR code and it'll bring you to the download page to download the Ronin app, which I actually have on my smart device, as you can see right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap on the Ronin app and it's going to automatically look for the gimbal. Now it's going to want to pair with your phone. So mine automatically connected. What you're going to have to do is hit connect here where it says DJI RS3. You're, you're going to have a connect option there. When you hit that button, that will allow you to give you the opportunity to pair it with DJI gimbal 
And you're just gonna have to enter the password, which is by default, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once you enter the password, it should come up here and show you that you have the DJI RS3 Mini connected. And it'll automatically prompt you if your firmware is out of date. So mine did when I first turned this on. It said that the firmware was not up to date. So before this worked, it went through and updated to the latest software. So just so you're aware, that is how that works. Now, if you click on the status button here, you can go through here and it'll show you all the different status options. And this is where we're gonna to wanna to go to calibrate if we're having issues. Like horizontal calibration, for example, is fantastic if you're trying to film and the horizon is a little bit crooked. You can go in here and you can adjust the horizontal calibration and that will make sure that your horizon is level. Just in case your gimbal is very slightly off, for example, like the what you have it sitting on is just a little bit off, that will account for that. And then restore gimbal setup, you can put it back to factory by hitting that. System calibration will help if your gimbal is like drifting for some reason. And then demo mode, we'll just put the gimbal in demo mode as you can see here, and it'll just move around in various ways uh, for that. So I'm just gonna turn that off. And if you double press the trigger here, it'll bring it back to the default position. And now checklist, you have Bluetooth connection and camera cable, uh, camera control cable. Now, because I'm using the Sony a7 IV, the a7 IV has a Bluetooth remote option, and that's how I'm gonna communicate with the gimbal and the camera, allowing me to focus, record, and it, which is just fantastic, and zoom. If I was using a power zoom lens, I would also be able to do that. So very, very cool. All right, guys, so right here is where you would plug the cable in if you're using the cable to connect to your camera. So it's on the end of this arm here. You could see it's like the front of the gimbal, kind of. Luckily, the a7IV, you could do it as a Bluetooth remote, which makes it super easy. Next thing we're gonna do is if you go into your user profile, also, by the way, it's gonna ask you to create an account. You have to create an account with Ronin. Now, because I have the other RSC2 gimbal, I already had an account created. So I just had to log in with my credentials. You guys might have to create an account. It's very easy. It's just as you would expect for any kind of you know, account creation process. Now user profiles, we have M1, M2, and M3. And you can go through here and configure the gimbal for however you see fit. Now one, I'm gonna set to pan follow. Two is set to pan and tilt. And three by default is set to all three motors which is cool, you know, so that's just how it is by default. And the follow speeds and stuff you can change here. Push mode, what that means is, if you have it in push mode, you can just grab the gimbal. Like you could basically rotate this thing any way you want. Um, it's good, very convenient for setting waypoints if you're using the waypoints feature, but by default that is off. And deadpan is another option that will just, it, it basically indicates how much you have to move the gimbal before it starts balancing for you. That's what the deadpan is. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is an auto-tune. So let's go in here to motor parameters and we have an auto-tune option. So let's select auto-tune. Auto-tune is preparing to start. Make sure all gimbal accesses are unlocked. Tap OK to begin. So I'm just gonna hit OK. And here you can see the camera does its little thing. It's just shaking it around to try to figure out what the payload is you know, whether it's a front heavy lens, whatever the case may be. So it just goes through there and it checks all the different uh, motors and uh, then it comes up with a result. And you can see here, this is what it decided that it needed to be. So we're good there. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is a balancing test. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna tilt the gimbal, it says at like 15 degrees. So something like that, for example, and then I'm gonna hit begin test. And now you can see at this weird angle, the camera is moving in you know, a predetermined path and it's determining how good the balance is based on this path. It's kind of hard to hold steady, but I'm trying my best here. There we go. So you can see there, the results are done and the balance test came back. Tilt, excellent, roll, excellent, pan, excellent. So we are 100% ready to go to start using this gimbal. So 
I highly recommend checking out the app because it's a really awesome the way it's configured. And let me just show you really quick. If we go into create here, these are the different modes that you can use. Now, we have a panorama mode for, you know, panoramic photography. You have a force mobile mode so you can use your phone to actually move the gimbal around. That's kind of cool, but it doesn't really work that good in the real world. It is a nice feature though, um, but it's hard to get it where you actually want it, you know? The manual tells you to mount it to a tripod uh, and then use the ball head to control it. Um, and then of course you have virtual joystick mode, which is kind of cool. Then we have time lapse, which is a really nice feature. And you can actually set waypoints for the time lapse. Then you have track, which will basically just set waypoints and the camera will then move from waypoint to waypoint. And you get to decide how long it stays at each waypoint and how long it takes to get to the next waypoint. So that's very powerful if you're doing complicated um, sequences. You know, but if you're just filming yourself, it can be quite challenging to get it, you know, to actually time correctly. And then we have game controller. Now here you can set up your PlayStation controller if you want to control the gimbal with that. I actually didn't play with that at all, but it's a pretty cool feature nonetheless. And then you have the Raven Eye, which is another feature that uh, Ronin offers in case you want to uh, check that out. And also up here on the right, you have this little catalog area, and that will be a bunch of tutorials for you, which is really nice. And uh, it'll walk you through some of the processes for different tutorials and camera movements, things like that. Over here on the top left, this is where you have settings, device list, and firmware. And you can see here, this is the firmware that mine's currently at. Device list, you could see here, we have the gimbal serial number, it's the mini. Here's the password that you can change if you want to, because like I said, it's set to that default password. And then settings. In here, we have different settings. You have the DJI product improvement. I have that turned off. Quick start guide you have there. Then you have a log out, delete account. And uh, those are pretty much all the different app options. All right, guys, so looking at the back of the gimbal here when you turn it on, this is what's considered the home screen. And on the top left, you have just what mode you're in. On the top right, you have the power of the battery, so it's at 99%. Then you have that green icon that's telling you that the gimbal is balanced and it's happy. If it wasn't happy, it would be orange or red based on the balance of the gimbal. So for example, if you were to screw an ND filter on the front of the lens, it would make the lens a little bit more front heavy and you would need to recalibrate it and this might go orange on you. Or if you have a zoom lens and you zoom it out, for example, that might go orange on you and you really should recalibrate it um, ideally. Just so you are aware, that's what that means. Now on the top left here, we have the start calibration auto-tune process, which we already did via the app, but you can do it here. You also have uh, the results of the auto-tune there. And now here is your different modes. So this is the pan follow mode. Let me just click that and I'll show you. You have pan follow, pan tilt follow, and then the full orbital mode, so all the axes are unlocked. Then you have custom, so you can go in there and do whatever you want custom. Then you have 3D Roll 360, or vortex mode as it's called um, on some other gimbals. And you use the joystick for that if you want to use vortex mode. And you can change the speed of this by changing the speed of the joystick. So the joystick actually has speed controls in there, so that's what that is. Guys, I'll show you what these different modes do in a minute once I'm done going through the back of the uh, screen here. So also on the bottom right here, you have follow speed. And this is a key feature here. You're going to want that on fast if you're tracking fast moving subjects. Medium is good for normal. Slow you're going to want if you're doing very slow, delicate movements and you don't want any kind of abruptness going on with the follow speed. So now you have two other screens. You can swipe down and you can swipe up. Now you have the power button on the side of the gimbal over here. You have the trigger here which you can press. If you triple press the trigger, it'll go into selfie mode, so it'll reverse the camera around, and you can actually disable that if you do not want it to go to selfie mode. And if you just double tap, it'll go back to the normal position. And then this by default is set to zoom. So you can change that to other features if you want, but that's what it's set to by default. And again, here's the charging port. Now if we just swivel this back, 
we have this right here, which is the mode button, and then we have the record button. Now the record button, if you just half press it, will focus for you, and if you hold it, it'll start recording. Same goes for photography mode. If you have the camera in photography mode, just pressing it lightly will focus for you. Long pressing it will actually take the photo for you. And so let me just show you what happens when we swipe down. So when we swipe down, these are the other features that are important. Now you have lock mode here. This is where you can lock the screen. And then swipe up to unlock screen. See that? So you just swipe up. Now the screen's unlocked. Now here we have the Bluetooth option. Now this is what will allow you to connect the Bluetooth to the a7 IV camera. I'll show you this in a minute because I want to show you the menu on the back of the a7 IV when I do this. So just stand by for that. I'll show you that in a second. Now here you have volume, so you can turn the gimbal on and off so you don't hear the beeping and stuff like that. And then there is the settings. So this is where you can disable selfie. If you're doing orbit follows, the camera will be a little bit smoother when you have it enabled like that. So you can turn that on and off there. Push mode, you remember how I told you that earlier? This will allow you to grab the camera and just force the gimbal in any direction you want um, without, you know, they're causing problems, you know, without fighting the motors, basically. So you can turn that on and off there. It's great for waypoint setting. Then you have the gimbal auto check, which is pretty cool. So you can just double check your settings if you want to do that. You have restore parameters. You have your language option there. You have device info, firmware version, compliance info. So it's, you know, not really that important, but that's where all that stuff is. And now if we swipe up and then swipe up again, we have more features. Now here is where you can change the joystick speed. Remember I was telling you that earlier? So you can make that slow, medium, and fast, and that will just change how fast this thing moves around. So if we put it in fast mode, you can see the joystick is, is now allowing the camera to turn much faster, which will make that 3D60 move much faster as well, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna put that back to medium, double click the trigger, and that'll put everything back to center. And then you have joystick smoothness. Now here is where that goes. So you can play around with those settings if you're having issues. Dial speed, that refers to the dial on the front of the camera here. That's what dial speed is. Now dial function, remember how I could, told you you could change that? This is where you can change that. So right now it is set to zoom. I don't like it set to zoom because it keeps coming up with an error message um, saying that the camera, this lens does not support that. So I'm just putting it on ISO, even though it's not gonna control that on the camera. So that's how I like having it set because like I said, I'm not using a power zoom lens and I don't wanna keep getting that error message when I accidentally hit this zoom thing. And I did keep hitting it with my pointer finger. So I ended up changing it to ISO there, just so you know. That's why I have it set like that. All right guys, so if you wanna go into sports mode, what you can do is you can just hold the mode button down and it's in sports mode right now while holding this button. So what it's telling you is if you double press the trigger, it'll stay in sports mode. So now if I just double tap the trigger, now it's in sports mode. And you can see up there that little sports guy icon. You can see the little guy running. All right, guys, so to disengage sport mode, you just got to do the same thing. Hold the mode button down, double tap, and now it's out of sports mode, as you can see from the top. All right, so let me show you how to connect the A7 IV. All right, so now if we go in here to the menu, I want to turn Bluetooth remote control on. So I'm going to navigate to the network area and I'm going to scroll down to Bluetooth. So you can see here, Bluetooth function I have turned on. All right, so in the transfer remote area, we're going to go in here and do Bluetooth remote control and I have that turned on. So now, notice how we have the little icon there with the camera showing the Bluetooth. You see that? you can see up here on the top right, it's connected, that Bluetooth option. Pretty cool, right? Go back to the home screen and we are looking good to go. All right guys, so I'm just gonna mount up this handle here really quick and it's very simple. It just slides on like so. This little bevel here. And you just crank it down and now I have this nice awesome handle. So you can do a dual handle grab as you can see here. Pretty nice way to handle it, and it's very easy to do, as you can see. So let me just show you what the different modes are. Now again, I just showed you the pan follow mode. So if you notice, watch how the camera doesn't tilt. Like if I turn the gimbal like this, the camera is staying level. 
So it's just going to follow how I move the camera when I turn it. So you can see when I turn it, it's following that. So that is the pan follow option. So let me change it to pan tilt follow by hitting the mode button. And now if you look, if I tilt it like this, it's still not tilting, you could see. So it's not going left and right angle wise, but if I aim it down, it will tilt. So now that's the pan tilt option. So it'll follow left and right, and it'll follow up and down like so. Now, if I go back to the other mode here, the FPV mode, So now this mode, watch, you see how it tilts? Now we're getting the tilt action. And you see how there's a little bit of a delay? Those are those things that you could speed up if you don't want it to be, if you want it to be quicker when you do that, you can change the speed and that will help with those situations. So those are the basic three modes. Now, if I scroll and I go in there to 3D roll mode, you can see now the camera's in 3D roll. So if I were to stand up, for example, you can actually double tap the controller to the right, and now it'll just keep spinning. So you can get this cool 3D roll going on. If you double tap the trigger, it'll stop rolling. So you can go double tap to get it to roll, double tap the trigger, it'll stop. Now if we double tap the remote the other way, it'll the joystick the other way, it'll go like that, double tap the trigger, and it'll stop. And notice how it stops in the correct orientation, which is quite cool. Let me change the mode back here. We'll just scroll down and we'll put it in pan follow mode. Double tap the trigger and it'll set everything up back to square. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the create area on the app and I'm going to show you how to use panorama time-lapse and track. Now I'm just going to do it here in the studio so it's going to be like a simulation but I just want to make sure that you guys understand like the details when it comes to this stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is I have the gimbal here so let me just plop that down and I'm just going to put it to the center by double tapping the trigger as you could see there. So now the gimbal is set up at default. Um, I have it set to pan follow mode, but none of that stuff matters because I'm using the app. So what I need to do is I need to turn the camera on, make sure that's working. Camera's connected. All right, so I have the camera in photography mode right now. So you have to have the camera set up how you want it for the panorama. So I'm talking shutter speed, ISO, um, aperture, things like that. You wanna make sure it's all dialed in. Also, what you need to remember is um, depending on which way the camera's facing, the exposure might change if you're using auto ISO. So you also may want to set the ISO to a hard number so the exposure does not change. Now that's up to you. It depends on the scenario um, and what results you're looking for, but just it's just things to keep in mind. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this panorama and you could see here that you can click and drag this box around. So I had it set up for a 360 pano. That's what this looks like. It's almost 360, not quite, but uh, right there would be 360 pano. And you can see how the camera is now going to where it would start if I were to do a panorama like this. Now also I have it set for full frame because I'm using the full frame Sony a7 IV. Focal length I have set to 20 millimeter because I have the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on there, you know, makes sense. Overlap, now this is something you need to play with. I just left it at default 30% and interval I have set to two seconds. So that'll give it a little bit extra time just to focus and take the 
shot between when it moves. Now, you don't have to do that, but it's, it's good to note um, the interval because depending on what kind of shutter speeds you're using, uh, that matters. So if you're doing it, this at night, for example, and you're doing very slow shutter speeds, you're going to have to change the interval time to, you know, more than what your camera is set to. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that makes sense. So I put it to two seconds, which is a little bit longer than I need, um, especially if the clouds are moving. You might want it a little bit shorter, but again, just food for thought there. And also note the push mode. I have push mode enabled. So that will allow you to just push the camera around to where you want. And you can, you know, start at that point, for example. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna drag this over. I don't want a 360 shot. I just want a pano. So notice how the camera's moving and it's letting you know where it's gonna start just by dragging these boxes around. So if I do something like this, for example, you could see how much the camera's gonna move. It's quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit start. So it's just gonna fill in the grid and you can see how it's moving to each location. And I have the camera set up for auto ISO. So it's probably gonna change depending on the brightness, like when it's aiming at the light over there versus aiming at the shadow areas to the left. So the panoramas might not look that good when I stitch it together, um, but you know, this is just demonstration purposes. So you guys, you know, can see like a proof of concept sort of thing, you know what I mean? So three more shots and then it's done. There you have it. So the panorama is complete. So that's the basic concept of how that works. So let me go back here and let me click the time lapse option. All right, so this is what time lapse looks like by default. Now you can change the interval, the duration, uh, push mode. You can also change your frame rate. As you can see here, I have it set to 24 frames per second because that's what I want to output as. And that's what I normally have for my YouTube videos, 24 frames per second. So again, you could use push to move this if you want. Like, so for example, if I want to start here, uh, you could see how the camera moves on the grid, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to hit the plus icon to add a waypoint. Now I want to add another waypoint for where the time lapse is going to be when this ends. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over and I'm going to hit the plus icon to add another waypoint. So that's how that works. And now what you can do is you can actually hit preview and it'll just show you like the sweep, you know, that I just created. Um, and now it's showing how it's actually gonna start and then finish. Uh, it's gonna go much slower during the time lapse though, of course. Now you can edit these if you want. If you select the waypoint, like it's on waypoint one right now, I could move that a little bit. And then if you select waypoint two, you can adjust that waypoint, for example. So let me just aim this up a little bit, like so. And now I just adjusted the waypoint. So you can go in there and edit them, you can add them, and you can have a lot more waypoints if you want, but two is what I'm gonna do. So now I'm just gonna click start, and it's gonna go back to waypoint one, and then it's gonna start the process. And there it goes, it's just gonna start taking photos and moving along. See how it's just moving that tiny bit because I have it set to 10 minutes. So it's gonna take 300 photos. So I'm just gonna cancel that. That's how time-lapse works. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is track. What that does, it kind of works like how time-lapse does, except track, you know, you can change the how long it takes to go from one point to another, and you could add multiple waypoints similar to time-lapse. So I'm just gonna add a waypoint here and you see how it says movement duration and stay time. So I'm just gonna do that. Now I'm gonna move the camera. So let's say we want it facing this way towards the monitor. I'll aim it up a little bit and I'm gonna hit the plus icon to add another waypoint. So that's gonna be the second waypoint. So with the waypoint selected, either waypoint, you can change your move duration. So that will just indicate how fast the gimbal will go from one waypoint to another. So let's make this three seconds like so, and stay time, we could make that, we'll leave it at two seconds. So I'm gonna add another waypoint, but first we need to move the camera. Now you could move it with this virtual joystick also by clicking this, if you'd rather do that. Like if the gimbal is out of reach, um, you can just do that. So let's go over here and I'll aim it like so at the other light I have here. So we'll hit plus to add another waypoint. Oh, you know what, I apologize, I'm actually editing waypoint two. I made a mistake. I'm glad I did that though, so this way you guys can see. So let me just put this back to where it was for waypoint two. All right, so in order to add another waypoint, you have to deselect it. 
All right, so we don't have anything selected now. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna use the virtual joystick to move this to the next waypoint where I want it, right about there. And now I'm gonna hit the plus icon and that will add the third waypoint. And to get out of this, just hit this little joystick button again. And then again, if you wanna edit any of these times or anything, you just gotta activate the waypoint and then you could manipulate the time and duration and stuff like that. So if I just hit preview, you can see what this is gonna do. Check this out. So this is waypoint one, that's waypoint two, and that's waypoint three. So I want it to stay at waypoint two longer. So stay time, I'm gonna make that four seconds. And I'm just gonna hit record. So the camera just started recording and now it's gonna move through the different waypoints and see how it's sitting here. So this is super powerful if you're trying to do like a multi-scene shoot and you're by yourself, for example, you could do that. Um, or it just depends. There's so many applications that you could use this for. All right, so I just wanna show you just a couple other things really quick with this gimbal. Now, if you hold the gimbal like so, and you tilt it like this, this is what's called briefcase mode. You might remember from the 3D roll, it looked very similar to this as well. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is, you see how this is kind of like a pretty large form factor as is? So what you could do is collapse it down, but the problem is this arm here is now gonna hit. You see how it hits right there? So you can't collapse it all the way, but what you can do is go halfway, then relock the lever and it'll lock in this position. So now it's kind of in a more compact position and it'll be much easier to use when, you know, when I go to reuse it again in the field, I can just throw this in my camera bag. All right, so here's my camera bag, and you can see if I take this out, you can see how this just fits in here so easy now. Super simple, and I got the handle right here. So I have the handle like behind these dividers so it doesn't scratch anything. And then all I gotta do is cinch this one down like so, and then I just put this one down on top of everything. And that just keeps everything tidy so nothing's gonna be flopping around. All right guys, listen, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And uh, do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button and please give me a thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful. I really appreciate that. I'll catch up with you next time. All right, take care.